Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of The Point. I'm your guest host, Jimmy Dore. I'm gonna to switch to this camera. I'm your guest host, Jimmy Dore, filling in for Anna Kasparian, who's off hanging out with Megan McCain. Isn't that nice? Yes, it is. So what are we gonna be talking about today? We're gonna to talk all about the news media. Couple of questions. Is there really a liberal bias in the news media? Uh, eh? Also, we're gonna ask, is MSNBC and Fox News, are they just two sides of the same coin? And what is the future of the news media? Is it gonna be wiped out by the digital age? That's us, we're the digital age. I know, I'm 40. Okay, 47. All right, so, and uh, how well the members of the press are handling their responsibility to hold elected officials accountable. We're gonna talk about all that stuff. Oh, and guess what else we're gonna talk about? Uh, there's a former Playboy Playmate joins The View. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but it's, it's not Joy Whoopi Behar. Goldberg. Oh, it is Joy Behar. Good. <laughs> oh. she, Joy Behar. Gorgeous. She Lady. is. Boy, she's, got, she's doing a new thing with her hair. And, uh, but before we get to it, let's meet this week's terrific panel, shall we? Right, first up is uh, Desi Doyen. She's uh, the brilliant, insightful, super sexy, and all-around fabulous co-host with Brad Freeman of the nationally syndicated Green News Report on the Bla bradblog.com. Hi, Desi, how are you? Hi, Jimmy, I'm good, how are you? Malcolm's really attracted to you. He writes <laughs> stuff like that in there. I was just Thanks, reading Malcolm. off the copy. Next to him is uh, uh, John Hotchkiss. John also Hotchkiss. sexy and... Yes. Anyway, sorry. No, it's okay. You are very, though. And uh, he's a TV writer, producer, as well as the creator of This Versus That, a web-based reality series that, quote, investigates the science within arm's reach. John, what is that about? Can you tell Look, me? Yes, I will tell you very quickly. Look, there's a show, uh, one kind of show, and then my kind of show, we look at the things that are literally going on right here, going on around you. I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say you're the kind of guy who uh, travels to work and you commute and you're in rush hour traffic in the morning. And there's one kind of guy who kind of sits in his lane and kind of weaves, stays in one lane and just creeps along. Yes. And then there's the other guy who kind of weaves in and out. And you wonder if you're the guy who stays in your lane, is the other guy getting to where he's going faster than you? So we did a fantastic experiment where we found out. We took uh, 17 cameras and we took a, a bunch of different cars and we put them on the 405 and drove them to the 101 up to the 134 during the worst uh, commute uh, uh, and what in America, I can't tell you. We're Come selling on. the ship. I am not at liberty to tell you, but I will say this: that it's totally fascinating, and that you can see it. The whole experiment at uh, thisversusthatshow.com. Oh, at, and lots of other really exciting experiments. You are quite a about tease. The sir. That is quite a tease. I really, uh, I really do want to know. Next to him is uh, Ed Krasnick. Now, Ed Krasnick is a hilarious comedian, producer, and Emmy Award-winning writer, as well as the creator of the Self Help Comedy Hour podcast. Now, do you help people with comedy? How do you do this? Well, we unite people from the world of uh, self help and the world of entertainment which means basically me. I'm okay. the only one on the show. Nobody comes on. <laughs> and I sit and I beat myself up. And I charge people to watch it. And that's basically it. I just want to say that John's explanation of what just happened on uh, what he was doing there, uh -huh. uh, I feel like I've been through hearts of darkness. <laughs> but, but, I, but in a good way. In a great way. All right, let's get to segment one, shall we? Is the, uh, it's the damned Jew-run liberal media, right? <laughs> now, why do you look at me and then go to desert? <laughs> Why am I the bad guy and then she's the good guy? Well, listen, I think every, people normally just accept the fact that uh, the news media has a liberal bias, a liberal slant. But here's a couple of people on our first video that kind of disagree with that idea. Uh, let's go to it right now. In the last 10 or 20 years, there's been massive research uh, documenting the fact that the media are extraordinarily subordinated to external power. Now, when you have that power, the best technique is to ignore all of that discussion, ignore it totally, and to eliminate it by the simple device of asserting the opposite. If you assert the opposite, that eliminates mountains of evidence uh, demonstrating that what you're saying is false. That's what power means. And the way you assert the opposite is by just saying the media are liberal. Okay, now the question that we discuss is are the media too liberal or are they not too liberal? Now, of course, that was uh, world famous uh, soft talker Noam Chomsky uh, and uh, his ideas on the liberal media. Now, Desi, uh, 
let me just get your ideas on this. Now, uh, what do you say to people when they say the media is liberal? Well, I think that uh, I would say, first of all, bias is in the eye of the beholder. I know that a lot of folks like to repeat that myth that the liberal media is liberal. But actually, when you take that old saying that reality has a well-known liberal bias, I think mm -hmm. that's actually based in a Pew study of scientists. And it showed that scientists self-identify ideologically as either liberal or moderate, because that's where the facts are. Fewer than 10% of scientists put themselves in as conservatives. And I think so when you see that that's where the facts actually are, that's, I think, what Noam Chomsky is referring to when he says that there is no other question allowed to be asked, because what we're actually talking about is the establishment media, the corporate media, versus the folks that, you know, like here at the Young Turks, it's independent media where your biases, if you have them, you try to be honest and forthright about them, talk about the facts, rather than the establishment media that pretends like they have no bias and instead uh, uh, covers things with uh, a specific bias towards the, ide the ideology of the establishment. Okay. Does the, that make sense? Yes, that does make sense. But let me ask, now, John, let me ask you, uh, do, do, is Fox wrong when they say that? They're they liars. <laughs> these guys, I'm telling you, look, dude, these guys are liars. How and do you feel about it, though, they really? Are, I, I, <laughs> Don't they, sugarcoat it. This is the, uh, there is, <clears throat> these guys, it is, they have, they, they lie almost reflexively because it is good for their pockets to lie to their base. And the idea that they're, when they talk about a mainstream media, what we're supposed to think is that, well, that there are two medias. There's uh, the liberal bias media, and then there's uh, this other media over here. But this, the liberal bias media, they get uh, to be on cable, and they get to be on the radio, and they come to your house, and they, they're everywhere. And that this one over here, the, the, me the media that's not mainstream, that's like media by carrier pigeon, okay? And it's just simply not the case that, I brought with me, my friend, my own chart, because I'm so furious about this. It makes me insane that I made some graphics, and I thought that you would, might find this yeah. useful. Okay. Right? Look, here. Look I just want you to quickly, I'll quickly go through this. Look, not prepared Fox for News, prepared. right? Here you go. Fox News has, uh, they're the most watched cable news channel in ele for 11 years in a row. They have the top 11 news programs on cable, right? Here you go. Bill O'Reilly, 4 million viewers a night. Uh, Hannity, 2.3, blah, blah, blah. Look at this. So, nightly news viewers, uh, Bill O'Reilly, every day, 2.7. Oh, and then look, Anderson Cooper, 800,000, and uh, Rachel Maddow, about uh, 700,000, right? And that, is a, that is a picture <laughs> of Her Bernie's. That is Geraldo <laughs> naked. You cannot unsee that. And then look, now, so, here, they, here are the mainstream what he quotes as the mainstream media organizations, right? Bill O'Reilly gets 2.7 million viewers every night. Brian Williams, 1.5. Diane Sawyer, 1.4. And uh, uh, Scott Pelley, 1.2, right? And not only are they all over television, well, I'll just stop. Yes, because okay. for the TV, so the, the, the point is, is that they are, it's not like there is special media that isn't penetrating uh, the hearts and minds of Americans. We all of the media is getting out to people and people will make their decisions one way or the other. But the idea that there is a liberal biased media that is secretly telling things that undermine the Republican Party that then also additionally make them out to look evil, stupid, and racist, that's what the idea that, the, yes. that Fox News is selling to idea. its audience. And nope. that it's so much easier to say that about our opposition than it is to offer up suggestions and, that fits things. And it falls into what I see a lot in conservative media is they per position themselves, the white males, as the victims somehow of society and the liberal media. Ed, what, let me go to you. What do you now say? why do you say victim and then look at me? <laughs> First I, we had you, now we have victim. I think it's everything's obvious okay, what's happening. Okay, good. So, now, Ed, what do you say to people? I'll just put you the same question I put to Desi. What do you say to people who say, well, the media is liberal, the news media is liberal? Well, here's the thing. I think if you want fair and balanced news, you'd have to have a fair and balanced society. And therefore, people would have to be balanced in themselves. And we're way out of balance emotionally, spiritually, business-wise, and every way you could think in this culture. So, how are you going to have a balanced news? How are you going to have fair? 
human beings are way out of balance now, mm -hmm. and human beings are not on television. Well, we so can't. I would, I would say that there's an issue that you have also with this, with um, you know, the idea that fairness is one thing, but balance is another, and that's kind of where we've fallen into. And I think that's what Chomsky was referring to as well, that we have fallen into this false equivalency, the false yes. balance that there must be two sides and only two sides, and those two sides are only the liberal when, Democrats when, when or the just done a terrible thing to its audience, which has convinced them that there are only two ways in which to look at the world. Either things are black, black or, or they are white. Okay? And so, if, you are, if you're against them, you're black. If you're them, you're white. It's much harder to explain the, the hues of gray that really are uh, the way our problems and, our, and their potential solutions uh, would be exemplified. Well, Gray is so much harder to do, well, me, and it's so much easier to say uh, they're coming to take away our guns, right. and uh, that's what we then don't like. Then to, then yeah. to, but then to also be able to, to say, well, we don't want to take away all of your guns. What we want to do is set up a series of regulations that would, and that on MSNBC makes it like you want to fall asleep, but that is what is needed in order to solve that particular problem. Let, let me go yeah. back to a time when the entertain the news divisions of television didn't have to make money. Right. Let me go back to that time, okay? Because mm -hmm. before the movie network well, came is, out, this is surely before you retired. <laughs> that's when I started my career uh, on cruise ships mostly. Okay. But uh, but let me go back to the time because when as soon as the news divisions had to make money. Mm -hmm. Before then, they actually told news. There was news. It was not entertainment. It was not supposed to be entertaining. It wasn't supposed to make money. It wasn't either. supposed to make money. Right. So Thanks. now we have to make money. So now we figure out that we have to be entertaining. We have to make the news entertaining. As soon as that happens, Edward R. Murrow spins in his grave as a rototiller, and it's over. It's over at that point. Here's what I tell, here's what I tell people when they, they make that assertion that the media is liberal, the news media is liberal, I tell them two things. I say, well, you know, people, the Fox loves to hate N NBC, and they love to hate David Gregory, is a big liberal guy. And I say, well, David Gregory is working for NBC News, which is owned by General Electric, which is a defense contractor and a bank. Correct. So he gets a check from a bank and a defense contractor. The two biggest stories that the news media missed in the last 10 years was the illegal war in Iraq and the banking meltdown caused by deregulation. And they're telling that, so how could that guy be, lip how, why would a multinational defense contractor and a bank hire someone to undercut their message? The fact is they're not doing that. They're hiring someone right. who's a corporate tool who will not upset the apple cart. And that's the yeah. problem with the media is that the media is not liberal or conservative, it's corporate. The idea, look. Bingo. Think about who owns, when people talk about a liberal media, they imagine that there's some sort of interconnected web, a kind of cabal, an organization that wakes up in the morning and decides how are they going to manipulate stories and undersell one thing and oversell another. Look, you have Gannett, you have the New York Times, you have half a dozen companies, more, you have a dozen different companies whose headquarters are all over the globe, country, right? And the idea that they might be somehow interconnected rather than what they're worried about is their own corporate profits and their own individual jobs and their shareholders. Yes. On the other hand, Fox News, Look, they've got uh, the Fox News channel, which is, uh, uh, I showed you all the people that uh, are watching it. Right. Then they own the second, mo I'm sorry, the most read newspaper in America. The Wall, right? the Wall Street Journal is read by about 2.3 million people every single day. So where do you think it is easier from which to, and I'm not saying that they're doing this, but where is it easier to hatch a plan in order to infiltrate society with uh, facts and figures that might be wrong or lying or whatever, whatever it is that you're doing? Is it easier to do it at the corporation headquarters at, of Fox's uh, at, at News Corp, where they own the newspaper and the new and the TV channels, or at these disparate right. offices all over the country. Well, this it, is where you get into what I think are you know the the, the extensive uh, infiltration to traditional media and traditional journalism. You know that's where we used to have these old style ideas of fairness. When you have a corporation that then hires the executives, that then hire the managers who hire the editors, mm. the editors decide what gets covered. So it's not just right. how it gets covered yes. it's also what gets covered Word choices, someone yeah, someone made the uh, point uh, and I'm not sure who 
it was. It might have been Jim Hightower or Bill, Bill Moyers who made the point that uh, this, they, do, they do studies, right? So, you'll, so conservatives will say the news media is liberal because we did a study and we found out that more news reporters voted for Obama than voted for John McCain, which all that shows to me is that they're not dumb. Right, yeah. and that they actually follow the news and they realize what's going to happen, and that proves nothing. Even if they were all socialists, right, it doesn't matter because the guy who owns the TV station is a corporate guy. He's like I said, he's a bank or he's a defense contractor. And the analogy someone made is if you had a bus and the bus represented the news, all the news media, and every reporter on that bus was liberal, but the guy driving the bus was a conservative, where do you think that bus is going to go? So it's not what they tell tell their reporters what to say, they tell them what they can cover, and they limit the frame of things that are allowed to talk about. When I watch the Sunday news shows with David Gregory or George Nuffleupagus, they'll have they'll have uh, advertisements for Boeing. And I'm like, why are they having advertisements for Boeing? Well, it's because they want to make sure David Gregory doesn't say anything to piss off the war machine, okay? What we're talking about, um, there are actual concrete examples that you can point to now. Uh, Reuters reporter came out just last week, and he has left Reuters since, but he said that he used to be focused very strongly on climate coverage. He's a good science writer. And he talked about when a new editor came in, this new editor explicitly told him, we're not going to really cover those things uh, as more as much as we used to. And then, you know, he discovered that his pitches were not being uh, accepted. Right. You know, and anybody who's pitched an article knows you have to wait for the editor to decide if that's right for that publication. Right. And he found that there was 50 percent. There's a Media Matters study that found that Reuters coverage has now dropped 50 percent on climate. And this is a dangerous and important, very challenging issue for the nation. And we are not getting this coverage that we deserve. I, I, I want to say, uh, forgive me, I totally no, that's okay. disagree. I know, I know. And here's, look, all of this assumes that the people who live in America are getting their news from one place and one place only, and that we're not. We're on our phones, and I, I, I look at the Atlantic, I look at some nonsense email that Eric Erickson from the, his crazy website mm -hmm. sends me, right? I get news from 17 different things, and, I don't, and some of it is owned by one company, and then I go and I look, turn on the local news, and I get news from that channel. And then I talk to a buddy at work, and he's got a different perspective. Okay. All of this assumes that we lack the, the gene to differentiate one thing from another, and that we're not able to make thoughtful decisions. I and think we most are. People, I think that most people do lack the gene. That, that they don't lack the, the gene. They don't. They lack the time. Look, I talked to John about this. We were talking off camera. I'm a guy who's trying I to hold on. To Ed off camera. You guys had time to talk <laughs> no. off camera. I was in I makeup be all day. No, okay. I would. We, we. I'm a guy who's got a family who's trying to save my house. So mm -hmm. why do I have time to look right. at 18 things? I don't have time. And that's, I think, you know, that we are actually, as sort of news junkies, we're sort of the exception to this. You know, I talk to my family members, uh, I talk to my friends. If you have a family and kids and a job and a house, you got a lot more on your plate. And most people simply do not have the time to filter through and figure out that's America. which one of that's, you. That's what America you know, is. That's, that's why you turn to the Young Turks. We will filter it out and tell you what the truth is. But right now, the truth is we're up against the break. And we're going to come back for our second, uh, for our se Second segment, right, which is going to be talking about the false equivalence between MSNBC and Fox News and a bunch of other stuff like that with our great panel. Stick around. Hey, welcome back to The Point. I'm your guest host, Jimmy Dore, while Anna Kasparian is off hanging out with Megan McCain. And we're talking all about the news media with our wonderful panel. And right now, our topic is uh, MSNBC, Fox News. Are they really two sides of the same coin? You hear a lot of people make that point that uh, Fox News and MSNBC, they just cancel each other out if you want a right lean spin or a left spin. Well, here's Bob Beckel. Uh, Bob Beckel is on the five, that show that replaced Glenn Beck, right? So they got rid of Glenn Beck, yay, and they replaced him with five Glenn Becks, yay. And uh, so Bob Beckel, famous for running the Dukakis campaign, uh, I don't know if he did that, but uh, <laughs> he should have. That's how shitty he is. Here he is, he had something to say about uh, the MSNBC versus Fox. I think people could, should come on here more. Uh, liberals ought to come here. I've been fighting for this since I've been here. I think it's a good, wide audience that they ought to talk to. I, do I think that there is some bias in some of, the, some of our people on some of those shows? Sure. Do I think there is on the other side? Absolutely. I mean, you know, you can't go to MSNBC and listen to that and not say that there is some bias on the other side. Now, John, let me go to you on this. So what do you say to Bob Beckel that the Fox News and MSNBC, Look, they basically like, just cancel each other out, right? No. Uh, Fox, no, no. Fox News are liars. Come on, no, you just they, say that because you're a liberal. <laughs> no, I don't say that. I'm telling you that that's a fact. That they are lying to their audience, 
and they do it consistently. And uh, so, so now, how do you make that point without it sounding? How do I? Because they you know, make the same point. They'll say the same thing about look, MSNBC. They'll say they're just they lying. Rather, they so do you have a fact or a figure of anything that can help cement that point? Yeah, they're liars. Every day, <laughs> I have a lot of interest. I'll show you another little chart that I made. Sure, I really I did. Okay, so look, I knew there was they a talk chart. about how, look, over at uh, Fox, they talk about how that there's some mainstream media that is uh, not talking to their audience. Okay, look, this is a chart that Depp shows the United States presidential election, right? Uh -huh. And uh, the red are the counties in the United States that voted Republican. The blue are the counties that voted Republican. Democrat. And what does this tell us? This tells us that look where Republicans live. They live everywhere. They, they live in places where you think that you can't get media. But guess what? You can get media in Wyoming and in the middle of the country over here. There's right. media everywhere. And they're getting it and they're voting. And it's not like that there aren't their people uh, listening. What they're hearing is, oh, we don't like that. We want there to be, uh, uh, we want gays to be able to marry one another. Uh, we want uh, 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 Mexicans to be able to come to our country and find a way to become citizens. They, so you're saying, how they, does this they relate to... They want there to be fewer uh, uh, shootings at schools, and they would like there to be some controls on the kinds of weapons that we're giving people. Okay. And uh, the how folks over Fox... How does this relate to our conversation with Fox and MSNBC? They are liars who are trying to... <laughs> seriously, they're trying to... What they, their interest is okay. in selling so you cash for the gold. That you've just exactly. They, they, they are keeping... That they're oh, misrepresenting the data. Oh. They're keeping information from their audience at the interest of turning your cash into gold. Right, And right. those are the things that interest them. Seriously, that is but, operation is run well, to, to me, do that. To people like us... Go ahead, Ed. And by the way, I was going to say, the other thing that's kind of interesting is... Where did Rush Limbaugh come before he became a big, big radio host? Do you know his background? Uh, that he was, I know he it's was a sports a announcer. Oh, okay. In San Diego. And? He's an actor. Yes. He's acting. An entertainer. Yes. Howard Stern. He's act, these people are actors. Yes. So I what are they doing? You. They're playing, they're taking, well, see, let's no. get back, let's get back to the well, idea of saying, MSNBC. You know, now, see, that bothers me when people make that assessment because what I say is that Fox News regularly, like John says, regularly misinforms their audience on purpose. MSNBC, while they might spin it, they don't misinform, they still stick to facts and they might be in the tank for Obama or something like Al Sharpton is, but what do you say to people who make that false equivalence? Well, I think, sure, yeah, there are, there is bias. You know, journalists are human beings. Uh, you know, they have yes. bias, but only one of those networks makes shit up. Yes, that would be. And the that's big kind of where we're talking about here. You know, when we talk about that, they lie about facts. They misrepresent the data. They misrepresent. Uh, Shirley Sherrod, I think, would be the Look, perfect example of what happens at Fox News. Look, what they want to do, you can either uh, curse the dark or light a candle, right? At Fox, they want to curse the dark. At MSNBC, they're like, well, okay, we want fire. Oh, but fire could injure some people, so we're going to get some regulations uh -huh. to protect people. And uh, oh, and now we oh we want matches. Oh, who are going to make them? Oh, it's going to be made by Chinese kids in a factory. Oh, that's not going to be such a great idea, right? That kind of TV and that kind of thinking and that kind of thoughtfulness takes time, it, and it makes for shitty television. But it's off off the time. And cursing the dark though uh, is great television. Yes. What ha what happens to somebody who's a reporter and then all of a sudden gets hired? by Fox News and then goes through their brainwashing program. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is your opinion well, about they, people that, that are on television and then now they get hired? Uh, they, uh, they just, I'm, I'm blanking on the guy's name, he just left uh, Fox News, now he's working Howard for C Cooks. CBS. Major, oh, what's that guy? Major, Major, Major Garrett. Garrett. Major Garrett, I just heard him on CBS radio. I'm like, that guy used to work for Fox, now he's here. So, so that's happens? why the other news media doesn't get together. Remember when Barack Obama was trying to get Fox News out of the press room mm -hmm. and all the other media stood up for them? And I think that was a big mistake. You have to go, no, this, is the, this isn't They're about an idea. Out. This is complete, this isn't news. This is like, you have to stand up against the National Enquirer, but they didn't, so I blame, I mean, the reason why they didn't is because they all know that there's a very good chance that each and every one of them will get a job at Fox at some point down the line and they don't give a shit and that's the bigger problem I think when people go oh Fox and MSC cancel each other out they're you know what the problem is that the Republicans and Democrats are beholden to the same people and that the MSNBC is only allowed to give you as much truth before it starts to piss off a defense contractor if Rachel Maddow said something that actually cut into the profits right. of the of the defense contractor or or, or a bank or the bank 
they would get rid of her immediately, but she doesn't do anything that cuts into their profits. And what the corporations have realized how to do is make money off the scared lizard brain conservatives and make money off the liberals who think that they're also getting something. But they're not really, if, if they were saying anything at MSNBC that actually upset the apple cart, that fucking station would go black. Right. But it's not. So that's what's wrong with that station. Because news is entertainment. Well, right. And also, in, well, of course, you know, porn is entertainment, which is probably why porn is a lot more successful than any news media. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Fox perpetuates well, no, that it entertainment. Doesn't say, it doesn't say that it's news. Uh, no, saying. it does. That's true. But I would also point out that on a head to head comparison, Watch side by side, <laughs> so on a side by side comparison, it doesn't also, it doesn't track. Uh, you know, MSNBC has a conservative on five days a week for three hours oh, every right. morning. Morning. There ah, is yeah. no equivalent on yes. Fox so, News. So, MSNBC so, has actual reporters. So, so does Fox, but they're actually they're they're not really the allowed to report to on actual news. The so. opposite to Fox. You are correct, Desi. And, but I would say the opposite to Fox isn't MSNBC. The opposite to Fox is Jenk Uger and the Young Turks or Amy Goodwin and Democracy Now. Well, I would think that that actually is an insult to Jenk and to Amy Goodman because they're actual reporters and actual journalists who have actual authentic facts to offer. They don't, uh, let's say, what's what, what, manipulate. Those, oh, yeah, I thought you said they were opposite. equivalent. No, no, I'm the sorry. Opposite. My mistake. Is there, yeah. Is there any? Okay, we got. I got to wrap it up. We're up against. I just wanted to say something bad about sure, Carl ahead, Rove. And I wanted it. to say something bad about Carl Rove on election night. Right? Why is he sitting there on election night, going, "Hold on, I think this thing's going to go different." It's because he's got. He's beholden to lots of guys who he lied to, right? And said, "Look, this thing's in the bag. You know, keep paying your money, right? Because if the thing goes south now, next time he comes to ask for them for a bunch of um, millions and millions of dollars, they're going to be like, Carl." Hold on, we paid you past millions and millions of dollars last time, and you didn't get our boy elected. And uh, now you want our money again. Uh, you know, they're going to go find a different guy, maybe somebody who's going to be, uh, have uh, more integrity and more honesty. Good luck. Okay, so now the bigger, I, a lot of people would say that the bigger discussion here isn't between MSNBC or Fox, that this might be a moot point anyway, because less and less people are getting their uh, news uh, through the traditional. Uh, uh, ways, right? They're getting it through online, they're getting it on their computer, their phones. We're going to get watches now pretty soon. Right. So um, let me ask you, Ed, uh, where, now I get most of my news is, uh, is written on an electrical box on a pole over here in Culver City. I go by there at noon, I just take a look at whatever that he wrote. That's a terrible way to thing. get it. And uh, how, do you, now how do you get most of your news, Ed? Because uh, you're a pretty savvy guy. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, I'm my own grandfather. That's, I don't want to say I'm out of the demo, but I'm my own grandfather. So, so now uh, I get most of the news online. I would say I go to the Huffington Post. I try to ba bypass the front page. Yes. Because apparently it's turned into the National Enquirer. Oh, my I God. I used to go to The Onion. Have you looked at The Onion recently? No. It's filthy. It's just filthy, filthy, filthy. It's not, another corporation the, took it over. That's the website, The Onion? The Onion. Filthy? The Onion. The corporation no, take over The Onion? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no oh, kidding. Yeah. You can't go there anymore. Oh, no, no it's, kidding. It's, it's filthy, well, filthy, filthy. When I go filthy. to The Huffington Post. Huffington Post. I go to The Huffington Post for news and side boob. What do you go there for? Yeah. I go for side boob and news. Okay. Fantastic. But can I ask you one quick question? No. I'm going for well, the to Desi. Yes, you can ask whatever you want, Ed. Why doesn't the Tea Party have actual tea? <laughs> and would the flavors be Constant Comment, Red Zinger, and Plantation Mint? That's all I have, folks. That's why yeah, I'm no, here today. Fantastic. I came for that. I'm loaded. No, what, what, do you, do you, uh, do, Desi, what do you think the future of, how are people going to get their news in the future? Oh, I think it's going to continue to migrate online, digitally, you no know, with doubt, the, right? the internet and everything. I think that the delivery is going to continue to migrate to the internet. I will but, say that John's But the, uh, the issue that we have with this is the pay model, the business model, you know, with this oh, great shaking money, up right? of, well, yeah, with the great shaking up of the media Amazon. landscape. What will us? journalists be able to make a living when we have a race to the bottom, much uh, like we've had the same race no. to the bottom with manufacturing. Good. I hope that uh, most of the people who consider themselves journalists, sorry fellas, uh, I hope that they go with the way of the ice, the guy who delivered ice to my grandparents, right? Uh, look, wh what's ultimately going to happen is we're going to get more and more things like with John King where he goes, I told them one thing and a half hour later, oh, it's something else, right? We're going to get an increasing amount because everybody wants it immediately, immediately, immediately. Journalists who are actually digging for actual facts and information are being pressured by their bosses to move it along, move it along, get us some information immediately. What we're going to end up with is a lot more wrong information. And one thing that reporters and news organizations have been historically good at is watching the thing unfold and bringing us 
not just the information, but even some analysis, so that we have a sense to how does this thing really affect us, right? Uh, to be bombarded with information and then discover that it's wrong, right, is, I gotta say, is quite frankly a terrible thing, and hopefully what this will encourage is regular people should be able to just go out and start investigating, asking questions, and don't just yeah. be passive people who sit by and listen right. to the people who are on TV like shouting at you, but go and, you want to know something about guns? Go out and fire some guns. You want to know right. something about, uh, are, are Latinos lazy or hardworking? Go out, and if you go to any Home Depot uh, across America, you will find uh, dozens and dozens of Latin American men who are looking to work every single day of the week, tw almost 24 hours a day, right? And you can find that out and go, oh, you know what, that notion that I had that they were lazy and they were yes. coming to steal from us go, is yeah. totally unreasonable. I mean, if you want to find out if the black it, kids in hoodies are criminals, you can go out and follow them. Exactly. So <laughs> I thought George Zimmerman was the guy from the men's warehouse. <laughs> I didn't even understand who he was. But no, I guarantee but, it. <laughs> yeah, he probably said that too at the time. But he, here's the thing, I mean, this to me, it's giving inst, into instant gratification. This is a, like a societal thing. You gotta get it fast and you have to get the news now and you don't have time and everything's gotta be there. Wait. Yeah. Have a four day waiting period on news. Did you hurry this point up? I wish mm. oh, I think that's No, but I mean seriously, <laughs> if you let the wave go, yes. then you will find things out. But you cannot get it instantly, and you cannot get it first. That Actually, horse has already left the barn. By the way, this sorry is what happens say. when you want it instantly. You end up with this. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, right oh, when you want instant news, you end up that. with my great -great? Haraldo in, without his shirt. Oh, that that's going to look. Boy, that looks terrible. Is that not weekend oh, at Bernie's? It was so close. Oh, well, there we go. There you Come go. On. Right. That is what that's happens. That's a man who opens Al Capone's wall. Right. That is <laughs> yes. what happens when you want. Right. By the way, if Wolf Blitzer does this, that is something you really cannot forget that that's you've seen. No one wants. And nobody later, wants that. Haraldo went on to call Edward Snowden a media whore. <laughs> but I want to just add one more thing. I, I happen to really deeply disagree with you on the idea Thank that God you can we just have, have, have that, that, that you cannot Finally. have people just, I mean, you can have people just go out and, and try to investigate for themselves. I, I highly encourage that. You know, don't take anybody's word for it. Go look for yourself. Yes. But there are issues that come along with the loss of the institutional memory of journalists who have both experience and a memory of what happened before who can provide context. Yeah, you know, so if you have people I mean, reporting, yeah, well that's, you know, what you don't get when you don't have people who can make a living focusing on the kinds of specialties and uh, areas that we have to have in order to understand the context and the history of what's happening know, now. People, These things didn't just people? happen this morning. Okay, coming up uh, in our third segment, we're gonna talk about uh, the new uh, cast member over at The View and uh, Elliot Spitzer and a lot more stuff that sounds dirty. Hi, welcome back to The Point. I am guest host Jimmy Dore. I'm sitting in for Anna Kasparin, who's off on assignment with Megan McCain. And we're talking all about the news media today. And in this segment, we want to focus on, is the news media really holding politicians' feet to the fire like they should? And uh, well, first up, let's talk about Elliot Spitzer, who uh, up until recently uh, was the number one sex scandal going. I think it's number two now. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely number two. His name is Weena. That's his name, it's in his name, his name is Weena. So, uh, <laughs> right, uh, he was recently interviewed, Elliot Spitzer was recently interviewed by uh, ABC or CNN's Jake Tapper. And uh, Jake Tapper, great porn name. And anyway, he was... Uh, so was Carlos Danger. He was pretty, so was Carlos Danger. He was pretty tough on Elliot Spitzer. Let's take a look. And the candidate for New York City Comptroller, the author of the new book, Protecting Capitalism Case by Case, Elliot Spitzer himself, joins me now. Mr. Spitzer, thanks for being here. I, I want to start me. back in 2008. What you did was incredibly reckless, and perhaps more importantly, it was very illegal. As you know, a Class E felony, paying for sex, a law you signed, bumping it up to Class E. When was the last time you broke that law? You were, you were when you were an aggressive attorney general and governor. You once called human trafficking, including prostitution, modern-day slavery. But one of the things that a lot of people take offense to is you never face charges. So you, 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 I mean, when you went after Wall Street types, you know, you painted yourself as fighting for the little guy, but right. I think a lot of people might look at you and think, look, you're somebody with money, you're somebody with power, and this is a perfect example of how people like you don't end up doing the time the way that the average person does. Well, you know, that interview reminds wow. me of the tough talk Jake Tapper gave Dick Cheney over the illegal war into Iraq and the torture. Oh, wait, he didn't get that check. Or what, I mean, that was, it reminds me specifically of when Jake Tapper uh, grilled Jamie Dimon from Wall Street. Oh, wait, that, 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 that They were that, that. easier on guys so. at Nuremberg, right? <laughs> I mean, 
So I'm like, but I don't, I don't have a hard, I don't have a problem with Jake Tapper being tough on Elliot Spitzer. I think he should be tough on Elliot Spitzer. He broke a law, he signed. But I just find it funny that that's the only person he'll ever be tough with is the guy who got caught in a prostitution scandal. He won't be ever be tough with a banker or a war profiteer or anybody else. Now, Desi, let me turn to you and ask you, uh, uh, is that typical, do you think, that kind of interview? Is that kind of typical, the way news media people handle politicians? No. It's not at all. And I'm glad to see Jake Tapper doing that. I mean, I have a lot of respect for him. Overall, he doesn't always get the access and the opportunity to ask those kinds of hard what? questions. And in the past, he most certainly didn't, but I'm glad he's doing it now. Mm -hmm. No time like the president to start. And I think that that is the kind of example that, that young journalists and young people who are trying to understand what the media is about, that's what they should be shooting for. That's the mm -hmm. kind of putting your feet to the, putting the politician's feet to fire is what we yes. need to be I having. Actually, I actually, so I agree John, with come that. Come to a sec. I, 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 I enjoyed that he did ask that, that, he did do that. I just wish he did it to more people. What's your point, John? Oh my God. I mean, he was treating him like, literally, like he was a, some kind of Holocaust uh, a guard, right? This is a guy who, oh, what did he do? Oh, he had sex. Oh yeah, right. we're, the, the, the media isn't liberal or conservative. We're fucking Puritans, uh, right? right? They, seriously, right. the idea that a guy, that we can't differentiate between, I like to have sex, and I want to go to work is the most astonishing thing about the American populace, that we are so offended by sex. And you this like. here's a guy who wants to, who knows I that he's going to get grilled, et cetera, et cetera, right? And yet I he wants to go do a, a job that is way beneath him. He was the governor, right? And now he's going to go and be the, the, the comptroller. That's why it sells. That's why it's a great interview, because America can get behind that. They yes. can get behind that kind of grilling. What they can't get behind is right. the kind of grilling where we started an Im immoral war. We can't get behind that. Yes. That's what, well, that's this, very unpopular. This is exactly what I'm talking about. To get behind. About. Yes, this is exactly. But here we have a very entertaining, and we can all hate this man for, right. for what he Easy did. Right, to hate what him. What he did not go to and what he did not talk about, though, was then, okay, great. So we've gotten that off to the side now. We've dealt with the fact that you yeah. broke now. the law as a person who was supposed to be enforcing the law. Yes. That is an issue that I think we have to consider the rule of law. But beyond that, now that that is finished and he has not been prosecuted for that, Let's look at the, what the policies are. Now do New Yorkers get a chance to hear about the policies that you know Spitzer is and going I, to try to I'm put sorry, forth. those names. I mean, Wiener? Isn't Jews name? used to change their names. His name is could name he say, could he say Weiner? Weiner is no good, Weiner is no good, Spitzer? What this, kind of names are these? This name? is a guy who wants to do public service. He doesn't, he, I mean, look, I want journalists to hold people's feet to the fire, right? When they do something that's genuinely bad when yes. they lie and but the idea that this guy had sex with someone and it's kept his socks on it's grossly out of proportion and here's a guy who wants desperately to do public service and he knows that when people are looking at him and yet he still does it right There's, they're, they're not going to pay him enough money to make it worth his while. He's already probably crazy rich, yes. right? He, CNN right. paid him a lot of money. He doesn't need, but what, oh, I think that there's something that I can offer people. Right. And to be, look. I see your point, John, but I, I will just say there are, it's, it's a little different between like what he did and what Bill Clinton did. He did because Bill Clinton wasn't putting people in prison for what he did. Elliot Spitzer was putting in people in prison and then he did the same thing. We so it goes to his character, his no, lies. We it, have it's, a okay, so we but have let's a, not make it about an that. Unreasonable, let's make uh, it more about how the media treats these seven. We subjects. have an unreasonable, uh, uh, we don't like that people are having sex. People don't want that to. That is do, true. These are all And all sex true. is right. like, sex it's the sells. worst thing that you right. could possibly do. Right. And yet none yeah. of us would be here without it. We all like it. And it makes people mad to think that a guy suddenly could go and be uh, very successful and then, oh, well, he's not. Maybe he doesn't get what he wants at home, so he's going to pay a young, pretty girl for it. But, but violence is fine. But I, yes, violence and war is fine. Then no, you get the last word on the subject. Go over ahead. that, you know, what he did was an illegal thing. You know, and that when no, you have, it's only illegal because we we've we've decided that sex is bad. We think the the church has no people wants are interested in sex. They don't necessarily think it's bad. I think they think that it's no, bad. They do to think bring lots of people. Okay. No, lots you of people what? think sex is bad. So I have to get to. We have one more subject I want to get lots to before we do. Uh, before before we have to break. Uh, the, 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 point, the View has a new cast member, yes. and uh, it's a lot of controversy because it was, it's Jenny McCarthy, and she's spoken out a lot about vaccines causing autism. 
Now, uh, I think people are giving her a lot more shit than she deserves. And uh, I got a flu vax. I got a shot for the flu two years ago. My arm still hurts. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if you look up, uh, the people you get uh, if from a vaccine for the flu, you could become paralyzed. Uh, it's called Guillain-Barr syndrome. Yeah. And, uh, and they know that it's going to be a certain amount of people who actually get it. So from this, so the vaccines are not as safe as people think, and vaccine. So what? But let's just go. Uh, let's start with you, Ed. What do you think about Jenny uh, being on the View? Well, the first thing that I loved is that they put glasses on her. That's the first thing because I thought, Smarter like, up. yeah, I'm going to be smart. I'm mm -hmm. going to put. It's like such a, a hoax. It's like you had. This is what you have to do on television. Mm -hmm. We're going to put glasses on people, and now all of a sudden they're a different person. Mm -hmm. I'll change the hairstyle. So I mean, I don't. I don't know. It's the View. I mean, what is this it a hard what? news show? No, it's what exactly, is the show? It's called The View, so she has this view, but people are upset because they think that she's anti-science. I think she's and questioning. She's gonna that. And she's she's gonna, gonna, but, but I think she's questioning it, right? She's questioning, no. but Elizabeth Hasselbeck, Hasselbeck, Hasselbeck is not, is not, does not have a pointed view. First, ABC and those guys, they can hire whoever they want. I, and I, have, I can keep two disparate thoughts in my head. One, she could have a job, and two, uh, she's helping to kill uh, babies, mm -hmm. which is true. If you are encouraging people now in the 21st century to not get their children vaccinated, right. we have over 100 years, science has looked at this, right? The guy yes. who wrote that paper about the MMR vaccine has been totally discredited. Right. He lied about it. Yes. Taking that, does that, uh, look, that thing is not causing autism in children uh, according to uh, all of the research that right. has gone on over a hundred years. Now, will you find where all, all our genes are slightly different? Are you going to find one or are you going to find sometimes where people are going to get sick? Absolutely, yes. our, our chemistries are all different. But if Definitely. she is encouraging people not to get uh, the rubella mm -hmm. or the measles or the mumps, mm -hmm. those are diseases that kill people mm -hmm. and not just people who mm -hmm. can make choices. Those are children who have uh, mm -hmm. who have no ability to make a decision. Right. And for their parents to put them in harm's way is uh, quite frankly terrible and criminal. Oh, do, you, do, you, do you have kids? Uh, two. Do you, did you get them vaccinated? Of course I got them vaccinated. So can now, I speak to them? No. <laughs> no. So now my question would be, you now if someone doesn't want to, va anyway, so, uh, I just think there's more questions about vaccines. A lot of people, when, when there's a mumps, a bre there was just a, a breakout of mumps, right? In, in San Francisco a couple years ago, and most of the people who got it were vaccinated. So people are talking about the efficacy of vaccines and what's in them, there's all the stuff in them. What do you say? Now you're, you're what, up on this stuff. So I what would do you say that, you know, what we have to make a distinction between what Jenny with McCarthy was talking about and the general issues regarding vaccines what and their effectiveness. Distinction? The distinction is that Jenny McCarthy said that vaccines caused her son's autism that the, and MMR, that she that the, was able to then cure her son through something called chelation therapy. None of those things have been borne out by the scientific evidence. So that's an important distinction distinction. Okay. What I think the controversy is people are afraid she's going to go on and use her platform on ABC to, pr to promote and perpetuate those false scientific ideas. That they are not, that those are uh -huh. not true, they are not backed by science. Autism is not caused, as far as we can tell by all of the scientific evidence, autism is not caused by mercury and vaccines. Then she should go to work for Fox. But <laughs> ABC, that said, ABC has a right to hire whoever they want, and they are not they hiring. They are not hiring a Playboy centerfold for her incisive commentary. They are hiring her because she gets ratings. She generates conflict. Look what we are talking about. Mission yeah. accomplished. Mission accomplished, right? Right. Yes. Right. Well, I hope she takes a scissor to that panel. I'll tell you that because. <laughs> And takes her glasses off. I really, I like the glasses. I do too. I really do. So, I enjoy them on you. So, so do you think that this will backfire on ABC? Do you well, think this is a it depends on whether or not she actually goes on and perpetuates these, you know, wrong-headed anti-science ideas on The View. If she doesn't, then there may not be an issue about right. this. And she just may be an interesting voice and an interesting perspective to add. She may not. A great and replacement for Elizabeth Hasselbeck. I mean, she fills in that seat and becomes, you know, the same kind of controversial subject on that panel. It's a game. It's a mix of personalities. Well, to me, what was wild about uh, Elizabeth Hasselbeck being on, like, it wasn't controversial that she would come on and just say incorrect things all the time. You know, like, we talk about this, about facts and lies and stuff, and even when it came down to, you know, she considers herself a conservative or Republican, Elizabeth Hasselbeck, and they were talking about voting rights and the suppression of the vo vote, and uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg came on and talked about how hard it was for her mom to get an ID. Barbara Walters talked about how she never had a driver's license and how what a, a process it was for her to go through to get one, and then all of a sudden Elizabeth Hasselbeck was like, yeah, I don't think that's really happening. You know, it's just like, it's just, uh, 
it's not a difference of opinion when your opinion is factually incorrect. That's it, not, you're, the, the you know what I mean? Is, is that Republicans think that uh, facts are a liberal bias. Yes. And that, look, Well, as Stephen Colbert it's, says, reality right. has a liberal bias, right? Well. Yeah, what he did. There's with, a scientific you know, basis for that. Look, what he did at the White House press dinner, by the way, should Which be ballsy. in a museum. I mean, what he everybody should be forced to watch that. Forced, forced to watch the Stephen Colbert. So that's what I'm talking. So that. when Jake Tapper does that to Elliot Spitzer, I like to see Jake Tapper get up at the correspondence dinner and do something uh, like that. Four yeah. feet from the president. Look, right. I would watch Jake Tapper if he would talk like that to anyone else. Right? Me too. Just a, a, a random politician who's that's our uh, problem. Who's, and uh, that would be great if he would grill them like that. But it, he won't. He won't. And uh, because so that's uh, what Time the, Warner wouldn't tolerate I think Jake Tapper has screwed himself in a sense that now he has set a bar for himself and his interviewing. So now we're all going to point back to why weren't you just as hard on that guy as you were as Elliot Spitzer? That's you right. just had Jamie Dimon on. Why aren't you just as hard on him? He'll just have different people on. Yeah, he'll, just, he'll interview people from sitcoms. Yeah. And he'll grill <laughs> them about politics. All right, we're, Setting that bar, I'm okay with that. Right? We have one more segment on the point where we check out people's tweets of the week. Join us. We'll be right back in a sec. Hey, welcome back to this week's Point. I'm Jimmy Dore sitting in for Anna Kasparian. And let's get to, real quick, this is Off Their Feed. That's the segment where we take a look at some notable tweets from the week. And first up is comedian Gabriel Marcus. And his tweet was, um, where's the press while this whole royal birth is happening? Oh, they were only biding their time until the next wiener meltdown. What's the name of the wiener, John? Uh, look, if they weren't covering this, they would have to cover something icky like the bankruptcy in Detroit. I like the, the thing I love about the press coverage is that they keep calling Kate. She's brilliant. They go, she's brilliant. She got a boy on her first try. That's what ah. you said. Brilliant. It was brilliant because I guess the chances of that happening were, I don't know, 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the Washington Post. There's their tweet. Bush didn't call on Helen Thomas for three years. Her first question when he did, why did you really want to go to war? Wow, so what will be Helen Thomas's legacy? That one question. I think so. Basically, and if that's her legacy, yeah. good for her. Fantastic. That's all we need. I, I think that unfortunately most people don't have any idea who you're talking about. Oh, I just wish more journalists worked like Helen Thomas. Me too. I sure do. Let's go to Dave Weigel. I follow Dave, and uh, he ignores me. Here's his tweet. <laughs> this gets to the real difference between Spitzer and Wiener. Spitzer, for all his faults, has a brain. And, of course, that's talking about the latest revelations of Anthony Wiener. Uh, he's, not, he's now being called Carlos Danger. Let's start with you, John. What do you say? Uh, Carlos Danger, by the way, was uh, Geraldo's uh, birth name. <laughs> Oh, awesome commentary. Can we please talk about the, poli the policies? <laughs> yes, okay. And now the next tweet from my favorite, the, the world's most successful intern, Luke Russer tweets, ladies and gentlemen. And his tweet was, my own take, we as media have failed that Detroit is now just becoming a national conversation. I like how he puts himself, we have failed. When the fuck did you ever not fail, Luke Russer? When did you ever do anything that wasn't a fail? Jesus Christ, could, do you have an accomplishment in your life? Are you kidding me? He has to know it. You were born. That's your accomplishment. And no matter how many shows they put you on, you're still an awkward, shitty host. <laughs> I would say that's great, baby Russer. You've been in the media for a while now. Why don't you start? Why don't you start? Hey, that's even better than what I said. Go ahead. Uh, this is a complicated story that's uh, gray and has people don't understand what it means, and that's why uh, the media isn't talking about it. It's not black and white. Okay, one more. Let's go for Howard Kurtz tweeted. You know Howard Kurtz. He's the media watchdog who now works for Fox News. He's a media watchdog that works for Fox News. Here's what Howard Kurtz tweeted. Ex-Obama aide calls for end to White House press briefings, saying administration's goal is first make no news. Oh, I would say that, you know, where would the establishment media get their marching orders? if they don't have the White House press room. Are they, is it a waste of time to go to that? I, I, think, I think it think is, so. actually. What do you think, John? You gotta get the uh, official line. I think okay. that Howard Kurtz, I used to like him, and then I discovered that he was a hypocrite who uh, was uh, double dipping, and uh, he seems now, quite frankly, awful to me. Here's a tweet from a guy named Alan Kovic, and, uh, <laughs> well, that's his tweet name. Okay. And uh, apparently, all the time I've been trying to get on the cover of Rolling Stone the hard way. So that's what Al Yankovic said about the Boston cover 
What do you think of what do you well, say first about of all, that? I'm a little biased because I'm from Boston and I was at that finish line with my dad year after year after year. Uh -huh. I think that the first thing is no one should ever buy a Rolling Stone magazine again. Number two, and I understand that it's their job to sell magazines. Uh -huh. However, I would say that there should be a freedom of speech license and they should have theirs revoked. I'm, I'm not saying that that picture of him on the cover of Rolling Stone made him look, uh, you know, handsome or attractive, yeah. but Lindsey Graham did take that issue of Rolling Stone and we haven't seen him for two days. Okay, there you that's go. all I'm saying. And you can always follow me on Twitter. Uh, that is our show for this week. That was a fantastic show, you guys. I'm going to say it because I hosted it. Uh, mm. Let's thank our panelists, Desi Doyen, John Hodgkiss, Ed Krasnick. And Ed, where can people find you and tell them what you're doing? Uh, it's a variety show that unites self-help and comedy, self-help experts and entertainers. And you can find it at selfhelpcomedy.com. All right, well, check it out. John, tell people where can people see your stuff and working, what are you working on now? Uh, I have uh, the, a series called uh, This Versus That. You this Versus that. that. This Versus That Show.com. And we look at the science within arm's reach. Desi, <laughs> where can people see more of Desi Doyen? Um, you can follow me on Twitter, at Green News Report. You can fi find all of our energy and environment uh, radio shows at greennews.bradblog.com. Okay, so that's it for this. I'm Jimmy Dore. You can check me out. I have the Jimmy Dore Show on the Young Turks Comedy Channel. What? There's a comedy channel? Yes. YouTube slash TYT Comedy. Check it out. We've got Bill Burrs on our show. We've got a lot of other funny people with us. That's it for this week. Hey, make sure if you got something to say about the topics we discussed, you go ahead and write it down there. And I know we make fun of YouTube commenters, as, but we read them. That's the important thing. So go ahead and go ahead and comment. And we want to know what you're thinking. And thanks for watching The Point. Next week, Anna will be back. For now, bye-bye.